time now for this week's mental health moment. According to a recent poll of the American Psychiatric Association, nearly a third of Americans who set New Year's resolutions mentioned mental health as one of their top goals alongside things like fitness, diet, and relationships. Among those making resolutions focus on mental health this year, 49% plan to meditate, 35% plan to see a therapist, 31% plan to take a break from social media, and 26% plan to journal. So here with us in studio to discuss is uh, Justin Chinette, spokesperson for Sweetser. Justin, thanks so much. So why is mental health becoming such a popular New Year's resolution? Well, I think the good news is it looks like the stigma attached to mental health is reducing and conversations like this each week are so important. I think people are seeing, whether it's from the pandemic, wars, the uncertainty in the world, I think folks are really looking inward. Uh, towards themselves to see what they can control, number one, but number two, how can they better improve their lives? And mental health seems to be at the top of that list. Self-care is mental health. And so whether you're seeing journaling, whether you're seeing meditating, folks are just really wanting to say, how can I improve my mood and my emotions? And so it's really great to see mental health be at the top of that list. Yes, it definitely needs to be a priority. Um, and that's kind of what we're here doing, making mm -hmm. sure that people know that. So what would be a good example of a mental health resolution? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it doesn't have to necessarily be a resolution. It can also be just a goal, right? Uh, and sometimes the wording is really helpful for folks. Uh, disconnecting from technology and social media. I mean, we're all glued to our phones. I'm a big, <laughs> a big believer in that. But it's one of those things where, you know, we, those notifications that go off every five seconds, it, it, it leads to anxiety. And so it's important to set boundaries for yourself. Maybe after six o'clock, maybe at dinner, you don't have notifications in the evening, right? Maybe it's on a particular weekend day. Just having that disconnect moment so you're not always in it, whether you're connected to your work or your personal life, it is a gateway to all of those communications, but having some boundaries is important. I also think it's important to get out in nature, sort of on the reverse side of that technological aspect of things. Just getting some fresh air, it could be 10 minutes at lunch, so important to just breathe that fresh air, get a reset moment in the middle of the day so you're not always in your office or always looking at a screen. Schedule some you time. You know, we're so overscheduled and overbooked as it is, but if you're someone who's like, I can't find any wiggle room in my schedule, block off time for you. You're worth it, right? <laughs> and so maybe, again, it's maybe going for a walk, it's finding some time to meditate in the beginning of your day or at the end of your day, but put it in your calendar and that way you're more apt to actually do it. Reconnect with a friend. Quality friendships lead to quality life. And so it's important to maybe find that time to send that text message or that phone call, reconnect with friends. And then lastly, seek professional help if you need it. It's okay to ask for help. And if someone is looking to find a mental health professional, uh, any tips on how to do that? Absolutely. You can contact Sweetser at sweetser.org. You can reach out to our promise line. Um, just ask for help, even if it's a friend or family member, but professional help is always really available and really important. And on your screen right now, you can see the Sweetser promise line as well uh, as the website there. So we appreciate you coming in, Justin. This is a really important topic, and I'm glad we had the opportunity to talk about it. Thank you so much. Yeah.